instruction was beneficial for developing readers as early as age four. In answering the question, how will employing phonemic awareness strategies in an early childhood classroom improve students' emerging reading skills, I will use data collected from the daily observations and reflection. Students were observed spelling words by paying attention to individual sounds. They were now encoding and decoding words and isolating initial, middle, and ending sound of words. The students were eager to try blending and segmenting words. The observations show that phonemic awareness instruction had improved students' emergent reading skills as in the beginning, students were not able to do activities independently, but with different strategies in the forms of games, songs, watching DVDs, and stories, they were now observed for spelling and decoding words and, were being, and are being able to identify letters and their sounds. Newman, Koppel, and Bredek de Camp 2000 and Wright 2010 supported my methodology by stating that when teachers plan activities and interact so as to draw attention to phonemes in spoken words, children's awareness develop. In answering the question, what are the effects of phonemic awareness instruction on emergent reading achievement, I use data collected from level three developmental checklist and the phonemic awareness inventory. At the beginning of the research, 10 students were performing at the non-master level Two students were at the near master level, and there were no students at the master level. In the middle of the research, seven students were now at the non-master level, five were at the near master level, and there were no students represented at the master level. At the end of the research, four students were now seen performing at the master level, five in the near master level, and three at the non-master level. An increase was shown in the master level and a decrease in the non-master level. The results from phonemic awareness inventory also indicated that there was an increase in, in, in levels 2, 3, 4, and 5. In the beginning, students could only complete level 1 and 3 students, and now 3 students were represented at all levels. Findings can be supported by Kirby, Carla, and Pat for 2003, and on 1997, we believe that phonemic awareness promotes reading success. Stanovich, 1993, and Adams, 1990, believe that phonemic awareness is the best predictor of the ease of early reading acquisition, better even than IQ, vocabulary, and listening comprehension. In answering the question, how will a classroom environment that promotes phonemic awareness develop emergent reading skills in five-year-old students? I use observation and reflection, daily assessments, and photographs that were taken. The findings reveal that students were interacting with books, charts, and games within the classroom. There was an increase in letter recognition. Students were encoding and decoding two and three phoneme words. There was an increase in letter sound recognition. Students were helping each other by working together. They were also making connections outside their text. They were reading or attempting to read the books that were in the reading corner. The findings can be supported by Treher in 2003 and Adam Foreman and Lundberg and by Beeler 1998, who stated that if students are given adequate instruction, formative assessments and exposure to a classroom environment with literacy activities, by the end of kindergarten, they should be blending and segmenting words of at least three phonemes, making progress in using some to spell simple words and isolating beginning, middle, and ending sounds of words. Blevins 1997 also believed that child's learning environment plays a critical role in developing his mental checklist. The other eight students had not mastered all of the areas but had shown improvement in the 12 week period. Two students were able to master all the levels on the phonemic awareness inventory, and only two students still remained at level one. The other students had shown improvement across the other levels. Most of the students could identify all the letters and the sounds they made 
They were matching, categorizing, isolating, blending, and segmenting words. Students were seen interacting with charts, games, and other manipulatives. This, is support, this was supported by Bradford 2010, who believed that phonemic awareness is strongly related to success in reading and spelling acquisition. Students encoding and decoding words were read. This meant that they were reading and spelling. For, in concluding, I recommend that phonemic awareness instruction strategies and other approaches be combined to see if students' emergent reading skills could be developed or our comparison could be made between phonemic awareness instructional strategies and other approaches that will impact emergent reading skills to see which one would be more effective. Phonemic awareness instructional strategies could be used, should be used in early childhood classrooms to develop students' emergent reading skills as improvement was shown in my research. I thank you all for coming. Thank Venita for that major presentation and um, congratulate her for the work she did during these 12 weeks, 12 weeks and the weeks prior to, because you know a lot of preparation goes into 12 weeks. Well, the, the intervention plan was for 12 weeks, but you know, before and after there was a lot of work up until last night, I can guarantee you. <laughs> So congratulations again, Venita. Thank you very much for sharing your work. And um, we may have one or two comments or questions which you'd like to ask. Um, Mr. President, do you have anything? Good presentation, Venita. Mm -hmm. I, I I have some questions, some, some commendations. The start of sound was lovely. Mm -hmm. Off the bat, it got my attention. <laughs> The, the, I must also comment the use of the daily assessment being in both written and oral forms to, 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 to put variations within there. You, your, your, your research showed the evidence of a pre-post-test scenario, mm -hmm. but you did not indicate that that was one of the tools which you used. The, 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 the level of developmental checklist. So it was a checklist and a, a not a pre test, not a test. It was just a checklist. checklist. So mm, what mm -hmm. I'm saying is that at, at, in the beginning, when you indicated those strategies you would use for assessment, yes, correct. you should state that you you use the assessment before and after. I think I did. Did it? Yes. I, I probably missed that. It was the same checklist which you use for the diagnostic. Right, and at the end. As well as mm -hmm. at, the, at the, yeah. Uh, 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 another question is, the, is it, was there a rationale for the sex disparity within the sample? There was a rationale for the? Sex disparity. Gender. 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 Yeah. gender disparity. No, that, those were the students I had in my classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Just as um, a follow-up there, because I, I have an interest in um, gender disaggregation of data. So, how well did my boys do? <laughs> was that reflected here? I missed it. No, because I was oh. focusing on the gender, but yeah. there was an impact on us. You must always focus on gender. <laughs> <laughs> When, especially whenever you do things having to do with reading. Yes. It is always yes. Very because we have a significant challenge with male research. Those four students that were encoding and decoding mm -hmm. to our boys, to our boys. Okay. Great. You see several hands. I'm Josephine and I'm yeah. right. A very interesting presentation. Mm -hmm. I came in in the middle of it, but I enjoyed what I came in and got. I wish my three teachers in my infant department were here. <laughs> but I have three teachers in the infant department and with 40 students in the infant department too. And the things that you presented there, I wish they were here to Please invite her to <laughs> the <laughs> That's right. As a result, um, as a result, 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 
Go ahead. Um, commendation to Mr. Brown. If you were nervous, I didn't see you. Right. No. Mm -hmm. You were so yeah. confident in your presentation. You were very well organized. And let me tell you something. If I was a child, I would want to be in your class. Yes. Yes. Your presentation showed that it was really an actual research. I could see the activities that were used. And it was really grab, it grabs me to see that um, children are out there who can't read. And the classroom is so bare and bright. And I could see that you put a lot of interest, time, and work in helping those students using your phonemic awareness to get them to sound the letters and to start some reading. And I commend you for that. I, could, I like the way you, you brought us through the different activities, the different weeks of activities that you have done. It was clear and a very excellent presentation. I could use your presentation and um, actually, I'm not a grade one teacher or kindergarten, but I could use your presentation and get information from you to help those students who are not reading to move up from the level that we are. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, great, thanks. Go ahead. Yes, I too want to commend um, Benita for a very good research and I, um, I think it's a very expensive research as well because to um, that is her um, display oh, around the back and to do all of these things for these little ones is very expensive. But um, my question is not going to be to Miss Simpson. Today is going to be to our president. <laughs> because you would have realized that apart from the fact that Benita was able to carry out a very good research, she had knowledge. And I'm, as I sat here and I reflect, I am thinking that what is the implications or what are the implications when um, teachers at the early childhood level lack this sort of content knowledge and how does it impact the children that um, go to these institutions daily and as a JTA president no hmm. as a JTA president yes is it a concern for you at this point uh, just, just, just to indicate that using the term teacher loosely to describe practitioners at the early childhood yes. level is almost irresponsible. 85% of the practitioners at the early childhood level are not qualified to enter teachers' college. Mm. So technically, they should not be termed a teacher. Okay. They, they, it has been a, a significant concern for the association. And coming out of that, we negotiated the introduction of a trained teacher to be assigned to the basic school. And how we operate is that you start out by getting a foot in. And after that, then you try to, 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 to put the shoe in and, and then the whole, the whole body. The aim, our aim, is to ensure that early childhood education is taken under the auspices of ministry. That it becomes a government responsibility to educate every child above the age of three. In doing so, we want to have them all exposed to trained teachers. And this year we are launching what is known as the Action Week. Global Action Week. Global Action Week. For Global Action Week, we are saying that each child deserves a trained teacher. Mm -hmm. So that is the theme of our Global Action Week that will, we will roll out in May. And it is geared towards addressing the lack of trained teachers in early childhood education. May I pick up on Mr. Hall's If I may address your question, I am a development officer with the Early Child Commission, and our teachers are here, some teachers are here, and they can tell you there's a new thrust out there where we are educating our practitioners as it pertains to literacy. And I'm not meaning to downplay our trained teachers, but there are non-trained teachers, or pre-trained teachers who are out there doing yes. Yes. far more than our trained teachers. And I can tell you from my clinical observations, they are doing extremely well, even though they are not college trained, but they are workshop trained just since 
the beginning of this month, we had what was called a curriculum clinic where teachers were educated, and this has been ongoing. And the teachers here can attest to that. They have been doing training in literacy, emergent literacy skills, which include all of what Mrs. Simpson Brown has been presenting. So that's the way forward for the commission. They did one in mathematics, and so they are aware of these skills that children must learn for primary school. All right, thank you, Nobel. I'm going to take um, Mrs. Hall's questions now, and then I'll come to you, sir, and um, anyone else before Josephine, we need some, all right, I'll take yours before Josephine gets to get some new voices in. Go ahead, Mrs. Hall. Thank you, Mr. for that excellent presentation and the hard work you had um, done with those students, I think 12 of them, 12. 12 students, exceptionally good job. I've always thought, I have a comment and then a question, I've always thought that it is important that teachers at the early childhood level understand that in the context in which we operate, the policies within which we operate, there is really not a set prerequisite for grade one. And so our, when our students come to us at the primary level in our public system, we, we should not expect them to come with all of the skills that you have shared. However, we appreciate we appreciate that they are far better off when they come to grade one with all of the skills that you have outlined having to do with phonetic <coughs> awareness. Um, my concern, right, and the point you made, you gave the information as relates to, I think it's Van Duren's study 2007, where you indicated that there is no difference in reading achievements of students who are exposed at either grade one or kindergarten. And I think that's a very powerful point because it sends the message home to us that um, for those of us who operate at early childhood level, who really pressure the students into achieving these, these skills overnight, that it really should not be the case. And we should understand that they have room for improvement in grade one, grades one to three, in fact. Um, in this respect, you would have known that the Ministry of Education is working at revising the the current curriculum. And um, one of my remit as a language officer is to ensure that there's greater um, awareness or greater room and, and um, attention given to the teaching of phone um, phonemic awareness or, the, or phonics as part of the grade one and language structure. In saying that, my question to you though is, whilst you work with those students for the 12 weeks, I think it was, right, was there any particular was there any particular guideline that you used in teaching the phonics? And you will understand where I'm going with that school of thought, where it is believed that there are some um, phonemes that are supposed to be taught before others. Was that a part of the structure yes, that because you employed? I, I did not. I did two and three phonemes. Like the, you have two vowels like e e and e a. I tried not to center my instruction around those words. I basically did with short E, the short vowel sounds, and focused on one sound of the letter C and G, so that I wouldn't get them confused. I, I centered it around that area. Very good. Thank you. Is it back to No, sorry. It's a The presentation? Although I teach math and I teach at the high school level, <laughs> I still have to encounter students reading mm -hmm. and pronouncing words. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, from here, and as an early stage, which is a start, has me wondering what happened between them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I mm -hmm. and I'm just encouraging you to keep the work up and please share. Because I do believe that even at the high school level, you need yeah. things like this. Yeah. Although it sounds very simple, but at the high school, as students at my school, See the word cat and tell you to pronounce it. So I want to just come in here and ask you. Well, well done, Mrs. Simpson Brown. I must say, even though you mentioned that her research 
seems to be an expensive yeah. one. I must commend you for the use of trash and I see where you have gone on to main things. Yes, you have used all the things that we throw away and you use it to make. I see you draw your hopscotch on the ground and stuff like that. So yes. it's saying to us that even though you have expensive things out there, you can turn our hands sometimes and make a fashion. And that's good. That's, that's almost synonymous with early childhood. Teachable is from being, where she said, expensive, and I stand to be corrected. What I noticed, the early childhood section, the teachers have to buy things because they don't get things. I don't know for the basic schools because I'm not in the, I'm talking in the primary. Just like the primary school, when the ministry sent out resource material for the primary section, they, you know, they normally send out anything for the infant department. And I always complain about I always, I always, when I go to cluster meetings, I always talk about it. And I noticed last week when I, I was called to come and collect resource material, I got a few charts for the infant department. And that never used to happen. The teacher, you have to buy things, things that you cannot meet, you don't have to go there and buy. So I'm glad that people start. Because early childhood, they are focusing on early childhood now, so they must put the resources for the teachers to use. And, and, um, and principal, principal Josephine, you'll be good too if the principals make some allocation yes. mm -hmm. for, the, for the early childhood, for the infant department. Really? You want to get it for the primary? Yes, exactly. My school is a small school, like for instance, September to March, I got six thousand dollars for regular grants. What can that do? Yeah. And the, the bookstore, I own the bookstore. And this is where you become creative now. Yeah. Where there's a will, you find a way. Yes. I don't say it's the ECC. Right, but the, the, the teacher's representative here has a point that he wants to make. And I, I want to, I don't know. I want to, I want to move back to the cost of the, 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 the things that you have done. What we have seen in, in, in Jamaica, is that whenever there are programs or projects to be done within the Ministry of Education, it is usually difficult to find teachers who have documentary evidence of having done action research mm -hmm. and having published. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to just indicate to you that the Jamaica Teachers Association has a company, which is a wholly owned subsidiary, called the Jamaica Publishing House. Mm -hmm. And I would want you to document the things that you have done. Oh. Aug augment them with research and so forth, mm -hmm. and publish one of those documents through, through, through that company. Mm -hmm. So that not only would you recoup some of your expenses, but you would also put yourself in line yes. to benefit from whatever educational programs or projects mm -hmm. the ministry would want to undertake. Absolutely. That's a um, good word, but there's an alumni mm -hmm. meeting today, President, and one of the things they're talking about is how do we get our work out there? Yes. So, uh, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Bert, yes, Val? Yes, I didn't answer questions. So this is, um, <laughs> I know at this tender age, students tend to suffer things. And it's easy to work with them at this stage. You're not prepared for some support. But, um, <laughs> 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 you know what you mean. Well, there is a team with, with the teenagers when they have to choose them. Um, did you have any problem with these little ones in order to get them motivated to have um, a strategy that you are going to be using? I know they were all excited because of the games that I was using. Even the three year olds from the neighboring classroom would come over and listen to the songs, and you hear them at break time making the songs. And when the bingo game was being played, the students from the other classes wanted to come and play bingo. And they said, teacher, we don't play bingo. We'll never play bingo again. So they were excited. They had no proper student Um, I mean, the, the three-year-old teacher, I can attest to what this is going to be And being the closest teacher to her, my classmates, being the closest to her, um, my students, as she said, would normally run over to her. Um, they, they'll help, they'll pronounce the song, they'll they, um, listen to the, 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 the song of the, 
Oh. Yeah. The, the alphabet song. Yes. They gravitated well to it. They were very enthused. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I'm very proud of um, my colleague. <laughs> yes. Very, very proud. Yes, I said it's a very good presentation, and we are all proud to have this on our staff. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Compliment of staff at your school, Poor teachers. Poor, I know. They're here. They're all here. Oh, poor. Wow. Uh, <laughs> all right. Excellent. 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 Um, I, I, my, my, um, it's, it's not about you, Benita. Obviously, I'm joining in the commendation because you've seen the need. My regret, Sister President, ladies and gentlemen, colleague teachers, is that something like phonemic awareness, which has repeatedly proven to be useful, that it, it has to be another project rather than a commonplace strategy which is used in our classrooms from, from pre-K right up to any grade that you need to use it. That's my regret that um, more teachers are not using it. And I think it's not lack of knowledge it's another word. <laughs> that remain. Yeah. It's, 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 it's almost like we are content to condemn a group of our future to uh, a heap. No adjective. A heap. It, it's unethical. Yes. Um, it's a part of it, isn't it? I mean, the whole, the whole, the whole phonics, the um, phonics program. But what this I is the initial. What I realized when most teachers teach phonics, they just teach a letter they are teaching the letter B, and then they find some words that begin with that sound and that sound. So they are trying to do anything to show the children the has combination. Right. Uh, oh, and I think that's what they are yes. teaching, and that is what is causing the problem. So they are not in relation to the children, they teach it in isolation. The letters and sounds and putting it together. And it's just in isolation. And they think that once they teach phonics, then they try to learn to you know what? We're teaching to the middle. If you get it, you get it. If you didn't get it, too bad. I'm moving on. That's it. We teach to the middle. Right. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sad. Um, any other question? Let me thank, therefore, Venita again on our behalf and ask that she continue the work, take up the offer made by the president to document, refine and document and make it publishable. Um, maybe, maybe president, maybe president, the, the JPH may want to put on a writer's workshop. We do have All right, I know this one coming for science, yes. but um, another one for people like, you know, yeah. yeah. So that they can know how to write for publication. But it's quite a different thing writing for a study than for, for publication. So she's on her way. Right?